Yo, what's up guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to Flower Paradise. And today we have another exciting episode of our Robotics Notes Elite playthrough. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. It's been a lot of fun to record and I, I'm honestly pretty excited to record more episodes of this. If you guys are, make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me. If you guys missed all the, any of the previous episodes, I'd highly recommend watching these in order. I know I did mess up on the audio at the beginning in the first couple of episodes, but hopefully the audio is a little bit better. I know my, my microphone might be a little bit uh, peaking a little bit, but um, hopefully you guys are having a good time. And uh, well, I mean, it seems to be a bit it's also cooler than usual today. There's a carefree feel in the air as time passes by at the old airport. I look out the, at the runway. Juna has been practicing karate katas for nearly an hour. She always does this when she has nothing else to do. I wouldn't be surprised if she brought her ka karate gi one of these days. There's no sign of Subaru. But considering his old man, he'd likely get suspicious if he came here uh, early every day. As for Akiho, she shut herself away in the hangar doing something or other. Whatever, she'll be fine on her own. <sighs> Obviously, I'm playing tons of KB. I've already played around 30 matches today, but I think around another 10 before lunch. Uh, with that happy thought running through my mind, I nonchalantly look up at the calendar on my phone droid. It's already July 30th. Majika. They skip my birthday. How could they? I think. Anything, anything of interest? Kojiro I, I It's very weird. Okay, so none of these I can respond to. Um, small size solar disturbance hit the west side of America. Malfunction seen on some electronics. Hmm. Just like NASA said, it will come in 2019. They announced it like six years ago. Huh. Wow, there's a lot of people talking about that big solar hit on America. I don't know if they're going to uh, talk about it here now, but... I want to cradle my head. Ten days have already passed since summer break started. You figure given that a month and a half, uh, that it's a month and a half long, it wouldn't go by so fast. We're already a quarter of the way through. <sighs> All I've done was take supplementary tests and play KB. That's right, those ridiculous supplementary tests ate my an entire 10 days of my precious summer break. Well, maybe study for your test next time. Come on, man. But they're finally over. I'm a free man. There's about a month left of summer break. It might not be a bad idea to just throw myself into KB for the rest of it. I use that desperate idea to push out the other horrific beast looming on the horizon. Entrance exams. From my head. Hmm? I could have sworn I just heard a car horn in the distance. Akio comes flying out of the hangar in response to the distant sound. What's going on? Yo, I like her outfit though. She's got the gloves on. She really looks like she's working on something oily and, and, and getting in there. You go, Akio. Her hair's always, you know, looks good though. You gotta make it, her hair a little bit more frizzy than that if you want to make me think that she's actually been working on stuff the whole time. Without my noticing, she's already changed into her work clothes. She sure seems enthusiastic. <laughs> Akio starts walking awkwardly towards the parking lot. Despite how it looks, she's actually uh, she's actually running, kind of. Juno returns from the runway, wiping her sweat off sweat off of her forehead with a towel. <sighs> Juna and I stayed behind in the club room at the time. As usual, Juna had no desire to go to the robot clinic. I guess she really can't handle Doc. Yes, he's scary, but I can't help but feel bad that his own granddaughter can't stand him. <gasps> Juna is rendered speechless. Akio opens the metal mesh gate connecting into the parking lot and a large truck comes rolling in. There's a sheet over the cargo. Given how big it is, there's a, either a lot of something or one big thing. And not only that, there's more than one truck. A small truck with a crane attached to it follows the first one into the lot. The two trucks follow Akio signaling, drive up to the front of the hangar, and then stop. Oh, Akio-chan! Thank you! 
A large man gets out of the passenger seat of the larger truck. Given Juna's surprised voice, she must know who this guy is. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. He's the man that uh, behind my beloved space candy and also Michi's relative? I guess his face does look similar. As the two of us watch him from a distance, he notices us. A huge smile crosses his face and he waddles his massive body over to us. He's like a bear, and for some reason there's a parakeet fluttering atop his head. Yo! Junna-chan! Looks like his aim was Juna. Uh, Juna bows deeply. Unnecessary though. The parakeet's just weird. I know they're supposed to add to his character or something, but his character's like a pedophile, so. The president suddenly turns his attention to me. He hands me an entire box of 12 bags of space candy. I I'm genuinely surprised. This is pretty exciting. There's a bit of commotion coming from the trucks. I glance over to fi uh, find the workers who drove in using the crane to unload their large cargo. Actually, wait a sec. One of those workers is Michi. Not bad. スポンサーであるへえ。これで必要なパーツはほぼ揃ったよ。あと足りないのって毒を手製の巨大サーボモーターぐらいで。それももう発注かけてるんだ。that's pretty major progress, although I'm not sure what to think considering all uh considering money did all the talking. What do you expect though? Money does all the talking to this day. Like the, the fact is if you have money you have power, at least in some regard. You know, and if you want to make a giant robot with the money that you're getting, like you're you're getting the money for it, you can do it. You know. <laughs> Our president's starting to get ahead of herself yet again. Even an amateur like me knows the hardest part of j making a giant robot over 10 meters tall is assembling it. Akio's way too optimistic about all this. <laughs> <laughs> the president is giving off the same aura as Akiho. ちなみにの、今うちの書でステッカーを作っとるからだ。ステッカー？ああ、スペースアメシャっちゅうてダーンと書いてあるでっかいやつだ。もういいじゃん。それをなロボの一番目立つところに貼ってくれ。頼んだ
目立つところにステッカーなんて貼ってないからだがなお嬢ちゃんインパクトっちゅうのは大事だやはりよ一番目立つ場所に貼るってのは譲れんそもそも貼るの前提なんだそれとなそのロボっちゅうのは人が乗ると聞いたがはい乗りますそれが巨大ロボとしての正しい姿ですから That sounds like a jab at Subaru, who, by the way, is still not here. So, no, 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 いいや、俺はまだ一言も乗るとは言ってないよ。ちょ、ちょっとかいそれにほら、資金を出してくれたスポンサー様の意向には逆らえないでしょう。ねえ。あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、あれかジュニア、そっかそっかよろしく頼むの特に純奈ちゃんを乗り組みにするけんなパイロット島出身の空手家美少女が操縦する巨大ロボっちゅうのはインパクト絶大だモインちゃん確実に何日新聞には取り上げられるこれは一面狙えるぞもしかすると純奈ちゃんに単独インタビューとかもあるかもしれんね。This whole time, Juna has been looking like she's seeing the world end before her eyes. Considering she's constantly practicing karate because she has nothing else to do, she should just roll with it. As our conversation continues, the rest of the parts are steadily unloaded from the truck. I mean, luckily, nothing went wrong, I guess. As soon as all the cargo was unloaded from the truck, the Space Candy Company president left like a passing storm. <sighs> Mitchie was left behind. He's tiredly completing,、uh, complaining while stepping from a small carton of milk. That's how you get it done. You, you, you get the.、Uh, You get the、uh, milk, obviously. That's, that's, I mean, what more could you ask for than just a, a nice carton of milk?、Uh, probably a whole gallon, I guess, but you know. Hadashiku wa koda. Miuchi o liyo suru to liyo sare ru koto mo fueru. Wagata ga? Kore, mame chishiki da karana. Oboe toge. Should a teacher really be saying that to his students? Ya, ore wa kaeru. Ato wa magaseta. Dara, this guy gives teachers a bad rap sometimes, though. Miuchi. <sighs> コモンとして監督するキッズエロだなミッチーはあれぐらいでちょうどいいってあんまり踏み込んでこられても扱いに困るし Considering he's the OG president you'd think we'd、uh, respect him more How is the gap so huge between him and Misune? つ疲れた As soon as Michi leaves Juna weakly sinks into the floor 私そのあの社長さんちょっとだけ苦手。That's fair. 押しが強い人だから。クマさんみたいに大きいから。I guess life-size robots aren't the only issue. Maybe she can't handle things that are slightly bigger than humans. Maybe if we're gonna keep the, that guy as our sponsor, we're gonna have to keep sucking up to him and using Juna. As though trading places with Michi, Subaru appears. パーツ届いたんですね。遅刻だよ。Subaru shrugs and ignores Akio's comment. He doesn't seem to care at all. He takes a peek inside the garage and then turns back around and faces us. 太陽嵐でやられていないかどうか、念のために調べた方がいいんじゃないですか。Ah, there's the solar disturbance. I knew it'd come up. Alright, nothing changed. 太陽嵐がどうかしたあついっぽで今話題になってるよね
大洋嵐が到達してえっとアメリカの西海岸で機械が壊れたとかなんとか。Yeah, I mean, you should probably. I mean, if your school building's still there, then you're probably in pretty good shape, you know what I mean? Like, usually in the solar radiation hits, you know, the, you gotta check the spaceports, you know, they might be might be、uh, pillaged, you know, could be the universities, the campuses, you know, you gotta keep track of that stuff. I played enough Civilization VI to know exactly what you need to look out for with the solar disturbances. I'm just throwing it out there. Which you need to look for. I don't think your robot will be, you know, heavily damaged. So, no, 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 The only answer that some people have is to riot. Not even, well, riot, riots might not be the best word. You know,、um, there are, you know, riots and then there are like protests, but when all the machines just randomly break, I guarantee you there are those people that are like, well, it was the government's fault. They didn't want us to do this. <laughs> Yeah, why? That, I mean, that's a good question, but why would people riot for any particular reason, really? I mean, especially ones that are out of the government's control. Like, you know, security that happens. That is true. That, is, that would be a problem.、Uh, security cameras being unable to work is, is、uh, definitely a, a, a dreamland for thieves. And America being is crime heavy. Yeah, as,、uh, America's really crime heavy. I, I believe the statistic is a quarter of the world's criminals are、uh, in America, whether it be American or not, is up in the air. But a quarter of the world's criminals, I believe, are in America、uh, of some kind. And、uh, yeah, if all the security cameras suddenly went out, I, I can imagine Detroit right now. Oh, God. Las Vegas is several hundred kilometers、uh, inland from Los, Los Angeles. The Roma One World Tournament is scheduled to be held there. The World Tournament is scheduled to be held there. The World Tournament is scheduled to be held there. The World Tournament is scheduled to be held there. The World Tournament is scheduled to be held there. The World Tournament is でもアメリカの話じゃん日本じゃ被害とか全然出てないんでしょそうだといいけどね。As soon as Subaru brought up the topic, the contents of a certain document fill my head. The Kimijima report. If I recall, it said the following. However, without a doubt, the sun is on the verge of a spontaneous discharge. According to the scientific evidence, large scale solar disturbances will occur in 2012, 2015, 2019, 2019 2020.、Uh, this will cause grave effects on the Earth and its magnetosphere. It's not cold, but I start subconsciously rubbing my arms. I have goosebumps. It's possible that everything written in that report was the truth. Can I really laugh it off as some crazy conspiracy theory? Aidi said that Cole Kimijima was murdered by someone. Why did he leave that report behind? And why was he murdered? It is because everything written in that file was true? I like the like, happy music. The people are dying, yeah. <laughs> But it is, it is something to think about, you know.、Um, it's such a fascinating topic. Like, if something like this were to happen、uh, in, in real life, you know, you've got to wonder will these solar disturbances actually like, ruin the planet or would it just ruin machines? Because if they just ruin machines, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I mean, it would cause a lot of damage and riots to break out and、uh, crime would go way up. But I think, you know. We are so reliant on technology now that it's just like, what would happen if 
this type of thing just happened because like they're saying oh this is a minor case but can you imagine the entire west coast of america like the city of los angeles and and all the way up through like washington state and and vegas just like completely getting destroyed like all their technology get going haywire or not working because of the solar disturbance or whatever it have you you know all at the same time for hours you know it's it's just uh you know, what would happen if that were to actually happen in real life? It would be complete chaos for sure. And uh, definitely in places like Vegas and Los Angeles, like it would be it would be pretty wild what some people would uh, get a, try to get away with. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that, you know, traffic lights would just stop working all of a sudden. I don't know if this affects cars or not, but it's entirely possible if it affects other machines that it just like suddenly stops working where people's cars will just like, they're going 80 miles an hour and suddenly the car will just like stop and you'll have to try and swerve out of the way. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know exactly the effects of the solar disturbance on, on all machines, but it would be a pretty wild scenario for sure. The Kimijima report I found isn't the only one on this island. As the rest of the hidden text files, there could be even more predictions and revelations. Wait, hold on, stop. Don't let yourself get dragged into this dark spiral of conspiracy theory BS. <laughs> there it is. I hear a melody that I know all too well. <laughs> yep. That's right, Juna told me all about this. All folks in Tokyo getting messages similar to the earthquake early warnings all at the same time. Juna and I immediately make eye contact. <laughs> this would just be so creepy though. Can you imagine this happening in real life? There's this solar disturbance and then all of a sudden everyone's like devices started playing Kagome Kagome. Like all slightly off. You hear it. They're all slightly off from each other, just making it that eerie feeling. <laughs> the melodies overlap, creating a, dis a dissonant sound. I feel like I'll get a headache if I listen to this for too long, and the poor sound quality makes it feel even creepier. The fact that it doesn't stop immediately points to the uh, being a call and not a message. But, you know how they said... See, you know how they said that, um... Dang it, I was gonna say something. Oh no. The guy distracted me. You know how they say... Uh, shit. I don't remember. I checked my phone droid and, I, and the display is similar to what uh, when there's a normal call coming in. Oh, you know how they say that the, the, the uh, it's similar to um, earthquake warnings? It could be a warning for the solar flares that happen, potentially. In this case, however, the caller's number is hidden. As a test, I try answering the phone. Huh? Oh, thank God. I thought it was going to be like this creep, but I mean, it's pretty sound. It's just like a fax machine's transmission noise. Is she the one doing this? Or is that certain organization that Kokimijima mentioned? I feel a chill running down my spine. My body is shivering. I can't take it anymore and I hang up the phone. Huh? Her timing is perfect. When did this woman get here? There's nothing around here, so you can see everything. Yet I didn't even notice it her until she was right there. As l at long last, Kagome Kamame stops playing. The hangar returns to silence. This, this music, though. Everyone stands still without saying a word. Nobody can wrap their head about what just happened over the last minute or so. You uh-huh. Who is this person? Did someone from the media come by for an interview? Or... Are they coming to murder us? 
Who killed him? Yep, she's gonna murder us. This woman smiles as she speaks. A single black van comes driving onto the airport apron. It's approaching at high speed. Then it comes to a stop behind the woman. They're coming to kidnap you. Alright. This music though. Brawny looking men in black suits exit from the van, five of them. With so many confusing things happening in such a short amount of time, I don't even consider it the option to flee. Before I realize it, I've been grabbed from behind with both arms twisted. I can tell I'd be in immense pain if I attempted to resist, so I stay put. Akio is grabbed by the arms by one of the men and forced into the van. Juna and Subaru as well. It hadn't even been two minutes since that woman showed up. Yet, in that short amount of time, she's managed to abduct all four high school students. I get pushed onto one of the van's seats, and I'm just dumbfounded by the entire situation. All I can think about is Koki Mujima's fate. The fear of being erased. My body's been trembling ever since Kagome Kagome started playing. That's fair. I desperately try to talk. The woman, now sitting in the front passenger seat, turns around to face us. She removes her sunglasses and flashes us a cheerful smile that really doesn't fit the situation. Tenoji Nai. Perfect ending. I, I, I mean, that was supposed to be a big reveal, I guess. But technically, we don't know who she is. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me because you already know your support is greatly appreciated. As well as letting me know in the comment section what you guys think of the situation. What would you guys do if you were in Kai's position when Kagome Kagome started playing? Like, would you freak out? Would you try and, like, resist uh, getting abducted? Like, what would you guys do in this situation? Uh, and let me know in the... Like what you guys think in the comment section down below. 